Hello and welcome. I hope your whatever your time zone is is going good. But today's agenda is going to prove to you why Biden is not going to be the next president. I'm going to talk about things like the recent debate, and then I'm also going to crack jokes about him because there's just no way in fresh heck that he gets elected again. But let us begin. There is an old question that I think fits quite perfectly here. What happens when an unstoppable force meets an unbreakable object? Well, I think we may have just seen what happens in this debate between Trump and Biden. Biden being the supposed unbreakable object. Because he's always talking about how he's so spry and young. But meanwhile, he has to get spoon-fed information because if he isn't, then he starts doing everything a normal old man would do and not when an old man with great amount of responsibility but rather one that doesn't understand what is going on around him. And I just have to say, I cannot wait until the US has a resurgence of being the great country it is. I may disagree with some of the things that Trump says or whatever, but at least he can talk with strength. Hearing Biden talk sounds like he's constantly having a problem with getting any energy. He talks slow and his mouth is always open like it's dinner time and Mama Bird just ain't back yet. We will get to immigration uh, later in this block. President Biden, uh, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to this question about the national debt. He had the largest national debt of any president in a four-year period, number one. Number two, he got two trillion dollar tax cut benefited the very wealthy. Speaker, the conservative leader continues to use cheap attacks and slogans uh, while he tries to hide from the fact that he is standing with the wealthiest Canadians and against the idea of them paying a little more. What I'm going to do is fix the tax system. For example, we have a thousand trillionaires in America. I mean, billionaires in America. Biden is somehow mixing up terms like trillionaire and billionaire. Like, how do you do that? I would be a little more understanding between trillionaire and millionaire. No wait, sorry, I meant billionaire and millionaire. Apologies, uh, my bad y'all. But at least between the big B and M, they're at least closer there than the difference between the big T and B. No one's even claimed the title of trillionaire yet, so I just don't understand him saying that. At least he didn't say quadrillionaire, cause then I would think he's being hyperbolic for humor while he's trying to debate. But on the opposite of this spectrum of unbreakable object, we've got Trump being the unstoppable force that he is. He's gotten his mugshot, been to court over and over again, gets nothing but the bottom of the boot from every major news source, and yet he is still here and in fact just as strong-minded. He's the first former president to debate a current president, and he's also the only president to step foot in North Korea and then shake hands with Kim Jong-un. President Trump was the first to arrive, walking slowly toward North Korea in the no man's land of the demilitarized zone, or DMZ. Then Kim Jong-un emerged, walking faster to catch up. The two leaders shook hands, Trump on South Korean soil, Kim Jong-un in the north. Good to see you again. I've never expected to meet you at this place. Do you feel the excellency take a step forward? You will be the first US president to cross the border. They were separated only by a narrow concrete strip, the demarcation line between the two Koreas. President Trump asked and was invited to cross. I asked him, I said, would you like me to come across the line? He said, I would be honored to do that. I would be honored. Now, I didn't know really what he was going to say, uh, but it was my honor to do it. The first sitting American president to set foot on North Korean soil. Meanwhile, we've currently got Biden, who might be the first president to become dust on the stage while talking. The dude takes so long to pass a single sentence that he might just become dust while in the middle of one. So I think in the question of unstoppable force versus an unbreakable object, the unstoppable force wins. Because in this scenario, the unstoppable object has not lost its sharpness because it's still breaking through everything, but the unbreakable object is just becoming more and more deformed as time goes on. But, uh, what are your thoughts on this, Gerald? I can't wait until Trump gets elected. <laughs> uh, yeah, you and me both. It would be nice to see the country become stronger than it currently is. Right? It used to be a country you should be scared of but now is a place that allows spitballs to be thrown at it. I mean, it constantly sounds like a good portion of America hates America, and to them I say, okay, go be somewhere else. But 
yeah. I, I just can't wait until a strong leader is put into a position to, uh, you know, lead. Unlike the current president who isn't even strong at talking. Though, on different news, I found a clip from Pierre Polyev, and yes, that is how I'm going to pronounce his name now, because that is what he finds acceptable. Just, uh, listen. Jokes in one of her speeches about the fact that nobody knows how to say your name. And so I thought I'd jump right in and ask you the tough question first. How do you say your last name? Because uh, I'll tell you, I've known you a long time, Pierre. That is a question that I get asked a lot by people who who've started to notice you and aren't quite sure what you're all about. How do you say his name? The simplest way for an Anglophone to say it is Polyev. But it has been said many different ways. Um, the it's, it's a name that comes directly from France. Uh, my father's uh, grandfather came from, so be my great grandfather, he came directly from France to Saskatchewan. And so in France, they tend to roll the last R, Poilievre, but no one says it that <laughs> way here. So Polyev is fine. I, I'm, e I'm easy with first name basis. At the end of the day, Brian, I don't care how you say my name as long as you know how to put an X beside it on election day. Sorry for today's agenda being smaller than typical, but I just wanted to put my two cents on this recent debate and my thoughts on the upcoming election. Because I know that if I was American, I would be voting Trump. But aside from that, if you agreed with my take, then hit that like button to show it. And if you want to listen to more of my takes on the general news going around North America, that being Canada and the US, then subscribe to show that appreciation for what I make and say. But either way, I hope to see you in the next agenda. But until then, have a good one.